Hello, my wonderful pen friends. Welcome back to another pen review video. I am glad to have you along with me today. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another pen from FPR, Fountain Pen Revolution. And uh, this is another pen that was sent over to me for review and giveaway purposes. So a huge thanks to them for doing it. I did review recently the Himalaya, which is uh, an, an acrylic pen. It had a number five and a half flex nib in it. And so we talked a little bit about this. Uh, and retailed for around $29. This is their Darjeeling model, and it is even less expensive. This retails for $15 and uh, comes in an acrylic, solid color acrylic, and this one has a number six nib in it. So let me go through the pen, show you, uh, show you about it, and then we'll do the standard stuff we normally do, the measurements and comparisons and writing and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and dive in. So this is the Darjeeling, and this has a very vintage vibe to it. You'll notice I'm on my black background today instead of my instead of having the paper underneath, simply because this pen is completely white. So under a white background, it kind of disappears. Um, it it certainly has a vintagey vibe. This reminds me kind of of um, a very simplified version of the old Parker Duo folds, from like the 30s and 40s. Uh, it's got a, a pointed tip on it on both ends you know, opaque white acrylic, nothing too fancy here. You've got a, a little folded metal ball clip, and this one's a little bit sturdier than some of the other clips I have seen in this in this price range. You've got two cap bands here, and this is an area of concern for me. The cap bands are not flush. Um, they feel a little loose. I, they're not loose, but they. I think they're, oh, well, actually this bottom one is just a touch loose. Um, they don't feel flush or well uh, attached. Um, it is a $15 pen, so you have to keep that in mind. You're not going to get the fit and finish you would get on a, a $300 pen or anything like that. There's a slight bulge in the barrel here, and then it tapers down to another point on the end here. And uh, still got a little bit of a machining mark right there on the end. Um, let's do the removal. So it's one two full turns to remove. And inside, we have got a very slightly inset number six nib. This is a fine nib with a plastic feed. And you've got a section here, which got just a slight bit of concavity to it, just flares out a little bit toward the end, but it's really not, not much of a flare. And then you've got some very tight, very smooth and well-cut threads, um, and a lot of them, which means this is usable as a, a, an eyedropper. And the, the threads are even pre-greased, so if you wanted to use it as an eyedropper right out of the box, you could. It does come with these miserable push-type converters, but fortunately they are standard international size, so you should be able to just pop in a different converter if you've got one. I don't like these for reasons explained in my Himalaya review video, but it's a, a bad converter is not a deal killer for me unless it's proprietary, in which case then we've got a problem, a bad converter, then we've got a little bit of a problem. But I've got lots and lots of converters, so I could... I could toss this one and throw in a, a, a higher quality converter and have it be fine. That being said, the converter in this has given me no problems yet. I just don't like that slide or, or push style converter. Uh, it's, it's kind of a recipe for disaster if you ever need to, to prime the feed. So uh, that is the overview of the pen. In the hand, it's quite comfortable. It's a little bit on the larger side, and I don't need to post it at all. Of course, it can be posted, but it becomes a little long at that point and a little unwieldy. It's acrylic, so it's very light, and uh, it's you know it's it's a nice construction. It's it's very clean and clean lined. It comes in nine different colors, most of them solid. There's also a clear version, um, and. It comes for $15 with extra fine, fine or medium. And if you want a broad one, point, one millimeter stub or a steel flex nib, that's an extra $4 to the cost. So either $15 or $19, depending on the nib type you want. So that is the overview of the pen and the design. Let's do some measurements and comparisons, and then I will show you how this thing writes. <music>
You know, Indian made nibs are interesting. Um, I've had kind of a hit or miss experience, but one of the things that I find is um, many of the Indian made nibs tend to run a little finer than you would expect. Um, this is a fine nib. It writes kind of like a Western extra fine, more like a Japanese fine. It is quite a fine line. It's actually a really nice line, though. It's it's a little bit feedbacky, but not unpleasantly so. This is the kind of nib you would use if you wanted to know that you're writing on paper. I do find it a little bit uncomfortable on rough paper, but not um, not significantly so. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you like to use textured paper, this might be a little bit more feedback prone than you're expecting because the nib point is going to be finer than a Western fine. Uh, in terms of line variation, there's a little bit of give to the nib, but not much, and you have to push hard for it. And in terms of wetness, for a fine line, it's actually quite wet. Uh, it's... Uh, you know, you've got, you've got a, a decent ink flow here, which I really like. I haven't had any issues with ink starvation or ink flow problems, no hard starts, none of that kind of stuff. So it does seem to be very well adjusted. Uh, there is, it's quite scratchy on the reverse writing, but even finer line. It's like an ultra extra fine. And yeah, overall, I am... I'm really pleasantly surprised at this pen. For $15, this is a far sight above a lot of other pens in this price range. I've, I mean, I've tried a lot of inexpensive pens, and this is one of the nicer ones. It's an acrylic pen, so it's lightweight. It's a little on the larger side, and, uh, and it writes well. I, you know, I, if this were mine to keep, I would probably smooth the nib out just a touch more, but that's a personal preference thing. It's certainly not a... It's, it's not an issue. And these pens are so inexpensive that these are really good pens to learn on because you can also get additional nibs. And I think they're three, four, five dollars a piece. So um, they're really affordable nibs and you can get extra ones. You can work on them, try to make them what you want. My only, uh, yeah, my only real minor complaint with this pen is the, is the, uh, the cap band here. Uh, it just does not feel super affixed but it's a $15 pen. I'm not expecting perfection at that price point. All right, I kind of combined the, the value and writing review segments together because in my book, they're, they're very closely related, especially for a pen in this price range. Is this your Pilot Metropolitan? No. And it's, you know, it's going to run about the same price as the Pilot Metropolitan. I actually like this a little bit better than the Pilot Metropolitan. The fit and finish is not quite as good, but the, and I am off center and frame here. <laughs> the, uh, the fit and finish isn't quite as good, but the, the writing experience is a little bit better for me because it fits my hand much better. The, the grip is thicker. The pen is longer. It's still lightweight. It's a good writing experience with a nice wet ink flow. And if you're the kind of person who likes to eyedropper pens, this is a really great pen to do it with because it's got a huge ink capacity. So that has been my review of the Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling. Thank you to FPR for providing this pen for review and giveaway purposes. Uh, keep, keep an eye out for when the next giveaway is. You can find it at penhabit.com or on the... Uh, on the Twitter page at twitter.com slash penhabit or on facebook.com slash penhabit. So thank you so much for watching. We will see you here soon for another review video. Take care.